Welcome back to Project 613. Today we learn two mitzvot that have to do with the suspected adulteress, what the Torah calls a sota. Now here we are referring to a woman whose husband suspects her of committing adultery with another man, but he doesn't have solid proof that she actually committed adultery. Rather, after suspecting her, he warned her not to go into seclusion with this individual. And then, after his warning, she was found again in seclusion with him. But still, it's yet to be determined whether or not she is guilty of actually committing adultery. So this is when she assumes the status of the Sota, who we have to determine whether or not she's guilty. And the Torah gives us an entire set of laws of how exactly this could be determined in a miraculous way. And this would take place only in the time when the Holy Temple stood. The woman would be brought to the Holy Temple. She would be met by a Kohen, by one of the priests, who would prepare a mixture of water and earth taken from the ground of the temple. The woman would bring a meal offering, and while holding her offering in her hand, the Kohen, the priest, would administer an oath to this woman, warning her that very soon she would have to drink from this mixture. And if she was guilty, this mixture would serve as poison and it would kill her. If she was innocent, it wouldn't do her any harm. And after accepting this oath, the Kohen would then inscribe the passages from the Torah that detail this mitzvah of the Sota. He would write it down on a piece of parchment, and then he would mix the piece of parchment and erase what he just wrote into the mixture of water and earth, and then the woman would drink from it. If she was guilty, she would suffer a horrible, painful death, if she was innocent, not only would this drink not do her any harm, but actually following this, the quality of her life would be improved. And if she was barren, she would then be blessed with children. Just like the woman is tested in this way, and if she is indeed guilty, she would suffer this punishment. The exact same thing would apply to her husband. If her husband was guilty, he would also suffer the same consequence. This is the first mitzvah, the mitzvah of the laws of Asota, where there are many, many more laws in addition to what was just mentioned now, and they can all be found in the tractate of Sota in the Mishnah and in the Talmud. The second mitzvah that we learned today pertains to the meal offering that the Sota brings when she comes to the temple, and that is that the Torah gives a special prohibition that it's forbidden to add oil into the recipe of her meal offering. And this is even though most meal offerings that were brought in the temple did have oil in them. Why in this case was there no oil? One of the reasons is that oil serves as a source of light. It brings light and warmth into the world. Whereas the sota behaved in a negative, dark way. And therefore, it is not befitting that someone who behaved and brought more darkness into the world should have oil which brings light into the world into her offering and that's why in her offering there would not be any oil have a wonderful day